The energy secretary claims he acted with the interest of the American taxpayers when he gave away a half a billion dollars of our money to Solyndra. That's hogwash. Solyndra, back in the headlines. This time, the Secretary of Energy testifies he's the one to blame. The Secretary of Energy, the final decisions on Solyndra were mine, and I made them with the best interest of the taxpayer in mind. He says he didn't think the solar energy company would fail, and the $535 million loan given to them was done without political motivation. And I want to be clear, over the course of Solyndra's loan guarantee, I did not make any decision based on political considerations. But is that true? It's here that companies like Solyndra are leading the way. In 2009, Solyndra is the flagship in President Obama's clean energy initiative. Given an astounding $535 million loan of taxpayer money, within two years, the flagship sinks. But it seems the loan was a bad bet from the get-go. In 2009, a private credit ratings agency warns Solyndra is headed for failure. The Obama White House forges ahead anyway. Days before the groundbreaking ceremony at Solyndra's new plant, the loan still hasn't received approval from the Office of Management and Budget. So administration officials press them to push things. Two days later, loan approved. The company digs itself into a hole almost immediately, bleeding money. By February this year, the company is broke. According to an administration email, the optics of a Solyndra failure would be bad. So instead of letting the company shut down, the Energy Department and Secretary Chu approve a refinancing deal worth $75 million, guaranteeing that in the event of bankruptcy, private investors in Solyndra would be repaid before the American taxpayer. Months later, Solyndra declares bankruptcy, taking with it all our taxpayer money. So, is Secretary Chu to blame, or is he just taking the fall for the White House? Peter and I are joined by Representative Michael Burgess, Republican from Texas. Uh, thank you for being with us, uh, Congressman. And Peter, let me start actually with the both of you. Chu says he was responsible. Do you think that he is taking a hit for someone above him, Congressman? Well, yeah, I'll, I'll go first. I think so. Uh, he came to our committee. Uh, he said the buck stopped with him and then <laughs> proceeded to pass the buck as, as, as often as he could. When he was asked specifically about the, uh, you referenced the bundler for the president, and he was asked if he knew about that, he said, well, I do now, uh, implying that, that he didn't know at the time. Now, look, this is the smartest guy in Washington, D.C., as you point out, a Nobel laureate. He holds the nation's nuclear secrets. Uh, he had to know what was going on, and, and uh, that just makes it so much worse. All right, Peter, how high up do you think this goes? Uh, I think it goes up very high. If you look at the way the program was structured, uh, after the 2008 election, two fundraisers for Obama were put in positions as strategizers at the Department of Energy. One of them named Steve Spinner, the other one Sanjay Woggle. And many of the people that they raised money from came back and ended up getting these department loans and grants. So this was a decision that was made not by the Secretary of Energy, but somebody high up within the Obama White House. And when you look at the list of who got money, you have 10 members of Obama's 2008 Finance Committee and at least a dozen campaign bundlers. This is not a coincidence. Well, of course, and in this case, George Kaiser. But, Congressman, you know, the whole idea of uh, the right refinancing deal where American taxpayers are put at the end of the line behind the hedge fund guys. Uh, did he answer that question as to why he would put American, whose money it is, at the back of the line and change the whole deal so there's no chance of our getting our money back, a half a billion? Well, well let's be clear. This, this, the, the language of the, of the Loan Guarantee Act that, that in uh, authorize these things in the first place specifically says you cannot subordinate the taxpayer debt to, to, uh, to other sources. And he clearly did that. He said, well, I only thought it was the first financing. Refinancing was not subject to that, and I have 
a, advice from a lawyer in an email that says oh, that I, I didn't have to behave that oh, way. Dear. But that's preposterous. The semantics game uh, that had... puts the American taxpayers at the back of the bus. Shame on him. I don't know how smart he is, but uh, I mean, that just seems ridiculous. Do you think, Peter, that the, the energy secretary should have seen this was going to collapse? You've got the Office of Management and Budget predicting the precise state that they were going to go belly up. You've got uh, Dun & Bradstreet. You've got Fitch. All said it was a speculative rating. We know they went to Wall Street. Wall Street wouldn't give them the money. Should he have known this? Yeah, I think he should have. And I think the people at the Department of Energy made these decisions not in the context of financial soundness, but in terms of what was politically expedient. To add insult to injury, uh, Congressman, what we've got this week, the Labor Department approving federal aid for those employees uh, the, from Solyndra uh, in the amount of something like $14.3 million. I mean, isn't that a, uh, you know, a predictable uh, uh, result of all of this disaster? Well, the, and in fact, that the firings were held until after Election Day 2010. Tell me this wasn't politically motivated. It clearly was political from start to finish. And uh, correctly, too, we do need to identify there very likely were some sources from within the White House that were putting additional pressure on Office of Management of the Budget and Department of Energy. And that really gets to the heart of why we subpoenaed the White House. That's a pretty unusual move, but I don't think they've been forthcoming with the information that the committee has requested. All right. And, Congressman, uh, also what you're talking about is the Joe Biden email, which says, I'm going to unleash the, the West Wing if you don't move this thing along. Anyway, I want to thank you, Representative Burgess and Peter Schweitzer. Thank you, thank you so much for being with us this evening.